I let this run for a little bit. Um, I'm kind of trying a different angle. Um, so before I jump in, I will kind of maybe adjust a few things and wait for more people to jump on. Thank you so much for uh, being here. Is that good? Hi everyone, thank you so much for telling us where you're from. I love seeing all the different locations or where our uh, community is at and where you're joining us in from. I see um, someone from Virginia. Yo, why aren't you coming down? Okay. Okay. Kind of changing up the angle, so we'll see how this works. Okay. Hi everyone, it's Tiana from the Maniology team with our weekly live every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. You can find us here on another nail stamping journey. So whether it's a tutorial, technique, or a hack, we're here to discuss the details and I'm so happy that you could join us today. Oh, <laughs> and today Devin will also be assisting in the comments and stuff. So feel free to go ahead and um, any questions or anything, um, she'll be helping you with things that perhaps I can't. And today there actually might be a lot that I can't because um, I'll be doing a lot of reverse stamping but enough about that. She mentioned my ring um, and just a cute all kind of moment. Today is actually my wedding anniversary. So special shout out to my husband who is super busy and is not watching this. But yeah, today is our uh, 13th wedding anniversary. So that's pretty cool. Yay. I've managed to survive marriage that long. <laughs> but um, actually... Um, funny story because I don't remember dates very well. Um, so our dating anniversary was yesterday and our marriage anniversary is today. Um, that's just because my mind does not do well with dates. <laughs> so we kind of did that on purpose. Oh, my earring just fell out of my ear. Okay, so, um, you know, as we know, inspiration can spring up anywhere. And oftentimes it starts right here within our own community. And uh, you guys are just so full of creativity. And, you know, sometimes it's like, why reinvent the wheel? So today's spring manicure comes from basically one of our own community members and a maniology ambassador, Megan, AKA Two Peas and Polish. So here I am on her Instagram account and I'm here to tell you guys, like really, if you are looking for inspiration for nail stamping and all that kind of stuff, she does some really, really cool things. But today what I'm taking specifically from her, thank you guys so much for the congratulations, is this really, really cute spring manicure. I don't know if you guys had a chance to, to see it um, because this manicure is on our website for the plate that I'll be using today, which is an Easter inspired plate. Um, she did such a cute manicure. Look at that. And she's also using Spring Sonata, which is our newest um, regular polish line, our spring collection, which is super, super cute. And I love the fact that it looks like... Um, like a speckled egg and she did such an awesome job so I was like and I love the um the color palette she used as well so I did make some minor changes but the inspiration clearly did come from her and major major shout outs to Megan for this awesome manicure that we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to recreate today like I said I did make some you know some personal tweaks and stuff but design everything came from her Look at that. Cute, cute stuff. So definitely go check her out. This is her Instagram account, two underscore peas underscore and underscore polish. If you needed somebody else to follow, definitely follow her. Okay, so like I said, today's live will be full of reverse stamping and 
I have actually the manicure that I'm going, you've probably seen it already inside of the, what do you call, the title, design, thumbnail, sorry, brain fart. So here, yeah, that is you. Hi, Megan. Thank you so much for joining. Huge, huge fan of your stuff. Can't wait to share this manicure today. I um, try to kind of recreate your um, like actual palette, but you know we tried to use as much as we possibly could. So these two nails, really, really simple. It's just coconut. You know me, I love that color coconut. It's such a nice, versatile color. I have a huge palette today to share with you guys. So as you can see here, you hear all of that? That's all the polishes we're gonna be using today. So um, let's just make a start then, huh? Give me hearts if you guys don't know anything about reverse stamping. Um, you know, some people might be new, some people might have been here for a while. So. You know, I'm not quite sure. I'm just kind of wondering how much I should get into today. Or if not, maybe we can just have a, I don't know, a fan nail art talking sesh. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Just like a, not a meet and greet, but just talking stories. Okay, so here, let me just showcase the, my goodness. Is this working? I don't know, guys, let me know. I'm, I'm moving this around, but I'm trying to see what is the best way to do this. Okay, so here is plate M287, and I believe this is called Easter Sunday. This is, um, we just released this a few weeks ago, and um, primarily I will be using this design and I'll also be using the cute bunny because those are the two designs that she does use in her manicure. But I also do want to share a few other, you know, cool, really cool concepts here that you could use for yourself if you have this plate or are thinking about picking it up. We have um, some Easter eggs. So say for instance, if you wanted to do something that was just like a solid Easter egg, you could just do that with one color. But you also have like this, um, you could double stamp, um, you know, these designs. So we have like a little speckled spots here. There's some um, lines. This one looks a little distressed or like tie dye, I guess you could uh, turn it into. We got some really cute animals and some furry creatures here. This duck, this looks like a little kitty, I think. This one is really cute. I stamped out this wolf just to kind of try it. And um, you have like a really cute kind of, I guess like a grassy, prairie, <laughs> hill, hilly um, design. But what you can really do with this is really uh, create like a cool landscape concept so you can layer this so say for instance maybe if you use like a lighter green to kind of stamp this on your nail you could and then go within with a darker green for like the grass to kind of um, bring the design up front this is a really cool plate so if this is you know something that you've been looking for for upcoming easter or spring in general then yeah maybe this plate might be for you Let's get started. Yeah, I kind of went back to my old school angle. That that other angle wasn't really working and I kind of want you guys to see what I'm doing. Obvious. <laughs> so let me do this. Ah, I forgot my napkin. See, I came prepared today. I'm wearing like my apron. I have my man maniology apron on, got glasses, everything. I thought I was set and I don't have a napkin, so just give me one moment. I feel like the napkin has become like a crutch for me. <laughs> I'm just using one. Okay, so I have actually, I'm gonna be using the, this is the two-in-one 
shrinking stamper and i'll show you guys something really funny today that i'll use this as my palette granted i could use the um lotus matte that i'm using but i'm actually going to use this and then at the end i can show you how i clean it up which is super simple i just uh roll all the sticky polish off of this onto my sticky stamper station and then um, so if you've never seen this is actually a two-piece um, stamper and then i have a regular monocle stamper so for today's manicure i don't think it's really necessary for me to show you just how i painted this like I said, I use the col um, color Coconut, which is a really beautiful cream. I like to use this color as a replacement for like white, you know, if you don't want something that's stark white. So I love to use this color. So you can kind of see like a little hint of, you know, yellow. It's a, definitely a nice creamy beige. And if you've seen our white uh, polish comparison video, I know Devin talks about this as a... a Again, a nice substitute for using white. Okay, so here, actually before I get into that, wouldn't you guys like to see Spring Sonata? So this is the color I'm gonna be using. This is Dandelion. So these colors that I'm gonna show you, this is a part of our regular polish line, but as you can see, it is speckled because it does have um, iridescent flakies inside the polish. This one, um, I believe the flakies are kind of the same, but you know, depending on what the color base is, I feel like it highlights a little bit more of the coloring and I just keep moving it so you guys can see that shine and um, that comes from the polish. But this one, I feel like it shows a little more of the green and I actually have this swatched out here, which just looks basically kind of speckled. And I'm also going to use a matte as well, which I feel like the matte um, makes it uh, less showy, <laughs> less shiny. The next color I have here is Grassy Patch. So this is a beautiful cream green base, like a really nice grassy green. And this one also has flakies, iridescent flakies inside. And I don't know if you can see kind of like it's a auburn orange, burnt orange that I feel like really shows through, but there's definitely some kind of like purples in here. There, I don't know if you guys can see like that flash of auburn there really beautiful color and the last color that's in this collection is called robin's egg and i feel like pretty self-explanatory the speckling definitely looks like a robin's egg so this is a really cute blue uh, kind of minty cream base polish and i feel like the flashes are more of like a green gold but again if you put a matte top coat on this it really looks like a robin's egg. So really cute collection. There you go. Okay, but in this collection today, I'm, I'm gonna be using dandelion, the yellow as a base. Okay. And gonna pick this design up here first oh I feel so nervous Megan's actually on with us so ooh, hope you don't critique me that bad but I hope I do you proud <laughs> so there I'm not gonna worry too much about you know cleaning up the edges and stuff because um we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of work on here, so don't worry about that. And with my other stamper, I'm just gonna stamp both of the designs because we're gonna to have to focus on doing a lot of coloring today. So the design I'm gonna use is Bunny, Bunny Bunny.
Okay, just so it doesn't get confusing, I'm gonna clear off this little cute guy over here, little ducky, duckling. Okay, and now I don't need that pleat because like I said, we're gonna spend a lot of time coloring. So let's just jump right in. Let me open up my acetone because I'm gonna be using my detail brush a lot. And today I am using this detail brush. It is the, um, it comes in a three pack. It comes with a seven millimeter, a nine millimeter, and a um, 11 millimeter um, tip. And I'm using the shortest one, the seven. Okay. So let me get some black on here and I'm doing that because um some of these lines I want to kind of dark darken them I see like when I picked up the polish it didn't kind of come through so I am going to put some black <laughs> like I said I'm going to use this as my palette first things first for reverse stamping please make sure you know this concept and stuff is is relatively simple once you get some you know practice but um, it can be tedious. Make sure that your polish is wet. You don't want to do reverse stamping when it's dry. And you see how much this design brush, I mean this um, detail brush, excuse me, catches. It's so thin, which is so nice because, you know, you don't have to, you can really focus on coloring in, inside the lines. Oh, bud. I made some bloopers on that, but that's okay. Oh, those lines didn't come out as straight as I wanted to. And I, I'm so sorry, guys, really. Painting through the camera is a, a challenge. But we're, we're going to muscle through this. Woo! That didn't come out as good as I wanted, but that's okay. Let's see. So I'm gonna go in with coconut and um, color in the bunny. I love using these brushes. If you don't have a detail brush and you have maybe like a dotting tool or something that is really small, you could also use that as well. Um, but if you're gonna start doing like small designs, I really, really recommend a really thin detail brush like the one that I'm using. Oh, I'm glad we're talking about that. Yes, shorter bristles definitely give more control. I feel like longer bristles adds more flexibility. Um, something like this, I definitely don't want too much flexibility. I wanna be able for the polish to go where I need it to go. So, let me try and do this. Bring it up a little higher so I can Oh, here's actually another good example. Keep your brush clean as well. If it starts getting chunky on the ends, just go ahead and clean it. Because I'm under these studio lights, I feel like my polish is drying up a lot quicker than I would be used to if I'm, say for example, just sitting at my desk. I can feel the polish getting tacky again. Okay. That's what Bunny looks like. 
So when I say tacky, even like this, I can feel like it's it's starting to kind of get that web line. Do you know what I'm talking about? Let me see. Can I show what that looks like? I don't know if you guys can see that. This is tacky, this is not wet. So all I do is add another dot, that's it. I think I saw a question about why I don't use a rose quartz palette. Uh, you know what? I don't think I have one. <laughs> Um, you know, sometimes, especially when the, um, items sell out, I actually, I don't think I have one. Maybe Dev has one, but, and you know, I'll be honest, I kind of use whatever's at my disposal, hence why I'm using my stamper head <laughs> here. But I actually found that this works for me because, you know, today I'm going to be using a lot of different polish colors and yeah, we just kind of grab whatever is nearest. <laughs> You know, we're sometimes we're testing too, and uh, or like Dev is testing, and we're just kind of grab like, we'll just grab this paper, or we'll grab the sticky stamper station, and we'll just do something with that. So that's why I think we come up with like all of these really fun tips for you guys to do. You know, just kind of use at what is at your disposal, rather than you know, it's just sometimes you, again, the creativity just strikes whenever. So. I got the feet, I got the hands. Okay. Okay, so I got a clean brush. Let me just move that. Next color, let's do, let's do his little coat there. Or, yeah, let's do the coat. So the coat, I will be using this beautiful color, Cornflower. This comes from our Forager line. And actually, I'm going to be using all three colors from the Forager line because I'm in love with this palette. I have to show you, okay? I mean, I was going to show you anyway because I'm using them in the manicure. But look at this. These colors. Oh, my gosh. I love this color. So this one is Cornflower like I said, which is like a, a gorgeous kind of like a dark periwinkle gray, I want to say. Is that confusing? Maybe a little bit. But um, this is kind of like a, a sea glass kind of green, which is called Russell. And this is Pasture. Yes, Pasture, which is kind of like a... Um, a really light mint cream. All of these are cream base stamping polishes. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. Okay. So I'm just gonna put some of that. I will be using corn flour kind of a lot because I feel like that's what Megan used in her manicure, but I love this color. So beautiful. So the rabbit's coat will be this beautiful kind of, like I called it a periwinkle gray. So when you reverse stamp, I mean like for me, I like to flip over the design so I can kind of see where I'm at, if I'm missing some pockets of polish. You know, because another thing, too, is you have to think backwards. Okay. So, like, right now, I can see I'm missing some polish right here on his sleeve. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. I kind of put a glob. That didn't look nice. Eee. No. 
and here's me trying to fix it. Oh boy. Let me clean my brush. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday. How was your Tuesday? Some of you guys are, I feel like maybe ending the day depending on where you're at, like Virginia. But if you're like us, it's like, oh, this is after lunchtime. Oh, he's turning out cute. Okay. And then I have Indio here, which is this russet orange. I love this color. Yeah, I feel like New York, you're definitely ending, about to end your day there, or it's like dinner time. Thank you so much for joining me during dinner time. Hope we're not interrupting. <laughs> okay, so I'm painting his vest. There you go. And a color, I see a few parts missing. So you, when you're reverse stamping too, you don't wanna put on too much. Let's see? Oh, cute little guy. And he has a trumpet, but I'm gonna do the trumpet last. Ooh, 8 p.m. in the Virgin Islands. And I have a little bit, where is that color? I have Sequoia, which is this beautiful kind of taupe, dark taupey brown. And I'm actually not going to even put that on because I don't really need much for um, Bunny's bottoms, his little pants. Oh, Megan, it's your anniversary for stamping. That's awesome. That is so cool. I guess since we're talking about like anniversaries for stamping and stuff like that, um, do any of you feel comfortable sharing like or how you got into stamping? Like what was it that enticed you or... Did somebody introduce you to it? Was it something you kind of stumbled on? Um, were you looking for like a creative outlet? Um, I'll go first actually. So I actually heard of nail stamping um, sometime in the beginning of 2000. So if you can believe actually stamping does go back quite a bit. Um, not so much maniology, but there was another brand that um, I feel like came on the market first, which was Conad, this uh, Korean brand who did nail plates. And actually, I believe like some of our, our drug stores here, we carry a lot of um, Asian brands because we have a huge Asian community in Hawaii. And um, sorry, I'll get back to my story. Bunny is done. Give me some hearts. What do you guys think? I just colored in his little trumpet. Oh, I'm sorry, and I didn't mention the color I used, Gold Rush, to color in his little trumpet. So that's what it looks like there. So now on to the big, the big design. This one's gonna take me a little bit. Okay, so I was talking about a story, right? <laughs> Um, so yeah, there was a company called Conad that came out with nail stamping plates, and I remember getting my, um, 
I think it was my boyfriend at the time, my husband now, but um, yeah, we were just dating and we needed to pick up his baby sister, who is not so baby anymore, um, a gift. And we actually picked her up nail stamps, uh, a few stamping plates and like these little tiny polishes, which you know, now I know were stamping polishes. And I remember watching the guy at a kiosk in uh, Vegas because that's where I was living at the time. Um, you know, kind of doing this demo on my, you know, for me. And I just thought the, the thing was really cool. So it really enticed me. And then as luck would have it, I would end up with a company that um, ended up doing nail stamping. How cool is that? So actually, I've personally known about nail stamping, but I feel like it wasn't until I came on with the the maniology team slash bundle monster at the time that we were called um if you're new that that was our first name because we didn't only carry nail stamping plates but um you might be a fan because that's where our roots came from but uh you know, that's when I started doing nail stamping and for work, but then I started doing it, you know, kind of on my own for fun. But I have always been a, a child that loved nail art. Um, I know me and Dev have had conversations about this, but when I was a kid, you know, I'd always ask my mom for press on nails, the kind of stuff. And of course, we've come a long way since um you know the days of like living in the 90s and you know all you had is like maybe one color press on nails now press on nails looks nothing like i could have even imagined nail art to be but you know there's obviously a lot cooler stuff now but i used to use like bugles bugle chips on my nails um I used, what do you call, um, clothing pins, not recommended, but oh my gosh, I always loved long nails. So I guess it was kind of, you know, going to be a no, no brainer for me to end up in some kind of field like that beauty slash fashion. So I see you guys kind of telling your stories. I saw um, someone say that, you know, I think it was during COVID. Yeah. So let me just interject here. Um, so all I'm doing right now is I am coloring this like daisy, daisy looking flower. Okay. And I'm just using that same Indio color. And earlier I was just painting the center black. I kind of like the the deep boldness of the center. So I decided to color the center black. can kind of show you that's what it looks like is it bright? yeah brighter against I guess it is come on camera help me out here thanks Dev I know there's a lot of quiet moments so much uh, focusing <laughs> needed when, you know, there's that much uh, reverse stamping involved. But I hope you guys enjoy this video. I know it's going to be a little bit longer than you guys uh, are used to, but I'm definitely not going to rush through this like the 15 minute challenge. Oh, goodness. I know many of you are like, oh, my gosh, T, maybe you should just take your time. And 
and I am taking my time actually I find a reverse stamping to be kind of relaxing you know in moments like this I kind of wish you guys could talk to me not just write that would be kind of nice like having you know instead of me having to read that'd be nice right Deb that would be cool <laughs> when you're doing this and stuff it's really easy to flood your image and what I mean by that is kind of like you know, you see this black stamped area. It's really easy to reconstitute that area, make it um, tacky or wet again by putting on too much polish, which you don't want to do because that will end up to um, smudging. So, you know, to try and avoid that, I would say lightly tap, drag the colors. Dev's introduction to stamping. I'll let her tell the story, but I do remember being one of, uh, if not the first person she's done stamping on. Was that, am I correct, Dev? I still have that exact manicure in my head. And I think I, there is a picture out there of what the manicure looked like. She did a really good job. Um, it was a really cute manicure, kind of Betsy Johnson inspired. Um, but I was Dev's first quote unquote client. And if, you know, I know it's hard because, you know, we've never seen each other personally, you know, everyone in our community and stuff. But um, I can, and Dev can correct me if she wants to, but uh, we're pretty heavy handed actually when we stamp both of us so um you know getting your nails done <clears throat> stamped by somebody who's heavy-handed feels like they're grabbing you <laughs> really hard I feel like it could feel like that and we're pressing into the nail really hard too it's something funny Hulk smash the thing that we tell you guys not to do but um, you know, for us, we really want to press in the manicure to sit really well in there. So I don't know. We feel like our technique works for us. <laughs> okay. So right now I'm going out with a pasture. I'm going to color in. It looks like a orchid -y design, but I really like this soft green to be honest, I don't think I've ever seen a green orchid, but I really like the color and I thought it was pretty. I love the bigger designs because that means you can make more of a mess and then, you know, it's like, oh, be a little bit more free with it. And if it has bolder lines, then, you know, it's like, oh, okay, it's more forgiving. When you have really thin line work and you're trying to do reverse stamping, it's like, uh, don't color outside the lines. Don't color outside the lines. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why can't Dev have a microphone too? Do you guys miss us being together in videos? Give me some uh, hearts if you guys miss us in videos together. Rather, do you guys remember us in videos together? It's been a long time. Um, but Dev could have a microphone here. <laughs> but she's actually not physically here with me. You know, we in the office have still been taking, um, you know, precautionary measures and stuff because... You know, this pandemic and COVID is still a thing that, you know, we want to make sure we're taking care of each other. And um, yeah, so 
We haven't done a video together, physically together in a while, but um, if you guys want, we could probably plan something soon. What do you guys think? Dev, you want to do a video with me? That would be nice. I miss having Dev in the video with me. I miss having somebody to talk to in the videos. <laughs> I feel like now it's been so long. <laughs> Tomorrow. Oh, okay. Since the cat's out. Ah, the cat's always out of the bag. You guys are in for a double treat. We have another live tomorrow because... Can anybody tell me what tomorrow is? Any guesses out there? Tomorrow is going to be the release of a maniology box. I'm sorry, a Manny by Me box. Every 23rd is when we release our new collection. And um, that's when we also do our unboxings. So it's never a secret. The 23rd is always when we do our unboxings unless the 23rd lands on a weekend. And then we'll do it on the following work day, which normally would be a Monday. I don't think we have any holidays that kind of land in and around the 23rd. Okay. So now I'm back with the corn flower and I'm just painting these flowers here. Once I'm done with this one, I'll show you guys what the front, uh, like what the stamped look will look like. so far with what I got. Ooh. That looks pretty. Still got a ways to go, but that's what it looks like so far. So Dev is saying tomorrow's gonna be packed with stuff. You mean something's brewing? Huh? Okay, yeah, I don't like the way that polish is looking. Tacky, you're making my brush all. That's another thing too, when, you know, when you're doing reverse stamping and you have a lot of work to do, like how, you know, I'm, I'm doing. Sometimes it can mess up your brush. I don't like that. I want a sharp point, <laughs> especially with these really fine lines here. You know, okay, sorry. Let me do this. Let me move that out of the way. Keep my palette here. I feel like you could probably see the design as I'm painting a little bit better. Let's try this. I wish I knew what kind of flowers these were. They're so pretty, but it looks kind of not, not quite lotus-y because it still has like the, it has six petals. Okay, good, Deborah. I'm, I'm glad. 
<laughs> you guys can see it a little bit better. I feel like this, um, the white background is better too. Sorry I didn't do it sooner. What was that? Sorry, I saw a comment about... I can show you guys how I clean the brush the next time I need to clean it. Um, actually, I can just show you now. So like, say for instance, now I have, you know, polish on the brush. Actually, this is what I'm doing. So I have my, um, my acetone pump here. Sometimes I'll just actually just fill up the well here. A little bit so you can see like the liquid and I'll just kind of take some acetone and it's important that um, you rub your brush in the same direction. So you're not going like up and down, up and down because the bristles can get really ruined. But yeah, and honestly you don't need much, but if I'm doing it this way, I just keep the cotton pad um, damp and as it's damp, I just go like this, just to get what minimal polish off of the, the brush. And that's it. So you see with like, like this reverse stamping, it looks like probably a lot of polish, but you're really not using a lot of product. <laughs> oh, Dev. Our community misses us together. <laughs> You know, and honestly, like right now, I'm maskless as, I mean, I don't think I've ever told you that, but yeah, I, I don't use a mask during the videos because, you know, I want the sound to come out as clear as possible. So I'm actually not quite sure how the sound would be if we're wearing masks in front of each other. You know, just looking out. Nobody wants to be sick, whether or not it's, you know, C-19 or just regular, you know, your standard sickness. And for me, you know, I have a child and, you know, people that I'm responsible for and stuff that, you know, I don't want to get sick either, so... <laughs> but I think we could probably do whip up something for you guys. Okay, I think that is all for this color. Okay. So let's clean that off. Next color I'm going to go in, I'm going to use coconut, which is our off-white cream color. Yeah, and I just put that dollop right on top um where i used to because i'm not going that deep i'm not digging down that deep into the polish i'm just grabbing the wet stuff so megan am i doing a good job so far is it coming out okay i feel like um my sample will probably look a little bit better like i said painting through the camera i am not a pro you know T's just out here doing the best she can. Oh, okay. Put the kitties to bed. That I understand. Glad she could join us, though. Thanks, Dev. Good looking out. Hi, Paulina. Thank you for joining. So far, this is what the design looks like. I feel like I got to turn it a little bit so you can see that cream color. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah, I like the way it's coming out. I am in love with this this print. I mean, this um palette, this color palette, though. This is the kind of spring I can get behind. Pastel is not really my thing. That's why Dev was teasing me in her last video. <laughs> oh my gosh, T wants to use pastels. Because as you can see, my go-to for my nails, I won't even lie, is black. Black. <laughs> I love black nails. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, I usually do some kind of offset of black something. Grungy habits die hard, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so experimenting with colors and stuff is usually not something I, I personally wear. I like doing them, though. It's just, you know, I don't know. We all got to be comfortable walking around with what we're comfortable with. And it's like, I do like the colors. I just, I'm not sure if I want to wear them on me. <laughs> okay, so let's see. We got to go in with the... Uh, Russell color, which is like the darker green, to get some of these leaves. I'm just gonna put a little dollop of that. Okay. You know, it's so funny, you know, as far as colors you're partial to. Technically, I would say I'm partial to blue. I love blue. I don't wear blue, though. I love my teals. Um, you know, even if it's, like, on the verge of, like, green, <laughs> too. Love. Like, this green I'm using right now, love that polish. But do I wear them? <laughs> no. I feel like if I'm not using black these days, I'm using uh, neutral. <laughs> Something new very neutral. I'm not using this design to go on my nail. I'm gonna be use putting this on tips. Right now I've put the tips aside because um, I don't really need them, but I don't have to shrink it. I'm just using the stamper because um, I'm using a tip, a kind of big tip. Shaking. Yeah, when I used to buy a whole bunch of like regular polish, um, I felt like blue was the collection blue, teal, turquoise was the collection that seemed to be like the biggest collection. Can you shrink a reverse stamp? I saw that question. Um, it, it's not something I think would work, um, especially with a design like this. I, th I think you probably could make it work, um, but the reason why I'm saying that is, you know, something like this, it dries. If you're shrinking it and stuff, the, the polish will start to crack. Um, so you would have to be very, very careful about what, what it is that you're doing. Um, yeah, so I guess it's not something that we've done just because, you know, the nature of um, 
regular polish. That's upside down. Okay, this next one I'm gonna be a little bit tricky because I am going, did I get all the leaves? Nope, I didn't, I got one more. I could see if it's like maybe a design that has like one color. And you know, it's it's not something that's like this because this is drying over time. It's, you know, as you can see, it's taking me quite a while. So yeah, I wouldn't necessarily do it with a design like this. Okay, so this one I'm going in with Hatha, which is like this really creamy, orange and I'm going with coconut and what I'm going to do is just put the two colors together and make up my own color because I just wanted like a kind of like a real light salmon-y color for the last flower I have to do this is literally what I've I've done with my sample so ooh, ew had a big gob of something come out. <laughs> and I'm gonna use this color, which is just basically like a really light, light, soft orange. I could play music in the background and not have this um, video get flagged. Either that, we're just sitting in uncomfortable silence here. <laughs> No, my polish is drying up. So I'm gonna have to make my mystery mix again. Darn. Oh my gosh, I feel like if there was beach sounds, I'd probably just fall asleep. <laughs> How much of this image will be on the tip? Um, I would say actually most of it. Again, because it's going to be on a false tip that's you know, kind of big on the bigger side. Um, and of course, you know, if you know you have small nails and stuff, you could probably get away with not coloring as much. Like, you know, right now I'm focusing on the sides and stuff. You know, maybe you wouldn't pay attention to those areas because you know, like, your nail would not fit. Um, But, you know, say for instance, I mean, I'm using a false nail, but even my natural nail, you guys have seen my natural nail. So, you know, um, th this on a na my natural nail, I probably could get at least more than half, maybe three fourths of the design. Maybe I wouldn't get the ends. So if you wanted to, you could just gauge it according to your nail. And the greatest part about this too, and if you have tinier nails, you can kind of pick and choose the areas you want to use too. But um, I can show you what the nail looked like. Actually, I'll tell you what, 
in one of the nails. So this is what a full nail, like I didn't, you know, this is the full design. So it picks up quite, quite a lot. This one I actually did take out a few pieces in the artwork, just because I wanted to see a little bit more of the yellow. So if we do a side-by-side -side comparison, like you can tell how, you know, the, the, the difference is. Slightly. Okay, so I think right now we are we are complete completed with what that looks like. So now we go on to the next part. So this tip is completely dry. Okay, this is the color dandelion. Oh, Megan's back! Yay! Uh, hi, Sonia. I can answer that question, actually. Um, no, we didn't stop sending out newsletters. But today, um, you know, we do, we do try our best to announce every live um, with a newsletter. But sometimes we don't just because, you know, depending on what content goes out that day. Um, so I believe today there wasn't a newsletter specifically going out for this, um, this manicure. But... But, you know, sometimes you might promote it at a later time. So, you know, um, that's why we ask you guys to subscribe to us so you'll never miss out on one of these. But, you know, sometimes if we have something that's a little bit more important, we'll share that instead. So here is my palette. I think some of these parts are still kind of wet, but I can show you just how satisfying this is. Look at that. Okay, that's the wet part. That's why it's taking so long. There. So simple. So my snapper head totally came through on that. So the next part, sorry, I'm just capping all my colors here. So we're gonna go in with the sticky, a sticky base coat. And I'm going to put a thin layer of sticky base coat on my tip. Try to go as thin as possible. The more you gob on, the longer it's going to wait to um, dry. Okay. And if you're wondering why I am asking, I'm, I'm sorry, why I am using the sticky base coat, it is because my designs they're dry um so i need something that's going to help to adhere these designs onto the nail so let's just go ahead and maybe wait about 30 to 45 seconds maybe about a minute it's still a little bit too shiny i'm trying to wait till it's tacky So Sonia, I see your question about um, newsletter. Yes, on the 23rd, we always send out um, content about our new Manny by Me box. Sniff test. Let's see. Tacky, tacky. Okay, we're good. So this little guy goes into the middle there you go come on focus how come you don't want to focus on my bunny okay Yeah, that's not coming out as nice as. Let's 
That looks cute. Okay, so now that I have that, we need to coat it with our smudge-free top coat. Technology, so fickle. Okay, so I'm going in with the smudge free top coat. I'm just gonna make sure to cover this design completely because I'm gonna go in with a matte top coat like how Megan does in her manicure. there you go so we're just going to wait for that to dry and now I'm going to show you how to do that process over again with the next nail so I have already my dandelion here okay so same thing going in with the, the sticky base coat I'm going to put that over The sticky base coat, you can use it as the way that I'm using it, which is mostly the way that I use it. Um, if it just dries completely and you miss that tacky, tacky layer, it'll just dry like a regular base coat. So that's basically what you can expect with this product. But if I'm doing reverse stamping and it's kind of a long process, like how this uh, reverse stamping has been, then it's a must to use. <laughs> Moment of truth. Yeah. So this one is way too wet. We're just going to give it some time. Sniff test. <laughs> That's still a little bit too wet. You know, when I'm doing these lives, I should wear my apron all the time, but I don't. This is the only time that I remember to actually use the apron. So the other day, this actually happens to me all the time. I have butterfingers but um, one of the polishes kind of like tipped out of my hand. Luckily, I just capped it. Okay. Oh, it's just that edge that's like a little bit wet. Okay. So let's see. Make sure that this design is the right way. And I'm sorry, if you guys are noticing, I actually do have a rip in the stamper head. It was something I just did right before I went live. But the stamper head still works. <laughs> I'm just going to push. So there you go. That design came out really nice. Let's see. I see like that little tip, like it's missing something because I'm just gonna put that up there. Okay. So what do you guys think? I won't even lie, this camera is pissing me off right now. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? If you have children, please earmuff it. But the fact that it doesn't want to get clear is really irritating me. 
that was just a real honest moment right there <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and protect this design with our smudge free top coat yes if you guys are loving this palette thank you so much megan for coming up with this palette this is just beautiful so she was the muse behind this beautiful design i just wanted to show you guys how she did it So we're just gonna go ahead and wait for that to dry. Because the next step when you put on your matte top coat, I feel like matte top coats are very finicky and they want a dry surface, a very dry surface. So, um, you know, because I don't know, mats, in my experience, if they're even just a remotely wet, if you look at them wrong, they'll just smudge. So let's check on Bunny here. That's a good thing. The smudge free really dries. Nicely. Okay. No, um, because I'm using the native YouTube app, thanks for the suggestion, but um, it doesn't focus. <laughs> so I'm kind of using you know, the native app and stuff and in YouTube, it doesn't allow to focus like that, like how your actual camera does. So that's okay. I'll figure it out. So right now I'm using our matte top coat. And let's So let's let that dry. As it dries, it will dry matte. I'm still a little afraid to go over the flowers because these flowers still look very wet. So I'm gonna give them a little bit more time. I guess while we're waiting, I can show you guys my backups. I actually made backups just in case because, you know, sometimes stamping game doesn't work very well but you know that's another thing too if you're doing all your digits if you have multiple stampers which i feel like most people do just go ahead and you can make all your stamps and just set them aside and just put them on when you're ready so here's two extra stamps that i created there's bunny I guess I could use this for something else. Okay, let's check. Yeah, if you're asking about storing the reverse stamp or, um, stamps, uh, first of all, I would make sure that there's a cap. It just helps for lint too, but I also feel like it helps to keep lock, lock in whatever moisture there is. Because if we leave it like this, it's just gonna be like, it's just gonna t deteriorate. So, yeah, 
Okay, wish me luck, guys. I'm gonna attempt this. Good. Okay, I'm gonna go run to the fan really quick and see if I can um, kind of speed this up. This one is getting mad. But. This camera really giving me a hard time. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to bring it up as close as I can so you guys can see all the detail, but really does not want to help me focus on the design. And this one is working on getting that. So yeah, so that's how these come together. While those dry, I'll go ahead and set up the tips that I had already done so you can see what the finished design looks like because I'm sure you guys don't want to just sit here and wait, right? And just watch these, literally watch paint dry. <laughs> With Megan and her original design, she actually did dandelion, which is the yellow base color um, throughout all the nails. I did um, coconut, just to kind of change it up. But again, you can do it her way. That's completely fine. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys really enjoy this manicure. Thank you so much for Megan. And again, if you guys are not following her, she has tons of really beautiful designs that I feel like you guys can get inspired if you're looking for, you know, really anything. Um, so Megan, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you so much for allowing me to do this manicure. And um, yeah, did I... Did I show you guys everything? Just making sure because this was a very long video. But I hope you guys enjoyed it and you guys learned something from it. And um, I really appreciate you guys, you know, joining me today. I've linked all of the items in the description. So you can uh, go ahead and find your way there if you need, um, need to get the plate or anything. And you can find the items at www.maniology.com. If you guys don't know too, we do have a community tab on our YouTube and we do post um, some really cool questions or polls or um, images that, you know, you guys can all be a part of to send over your opinions or uh, just kind of join into the community. So thank you so much and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Take care and be kind guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye. Oh, thank you so much for the anniversary wishes, guys. I really appreciate it.